Hey y'all, and welcome back to the Character Creation Course series. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to sculpt an ear. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, if you've been following along with the course, then you should already have the cylinder that's going to be a placement, and it's also mirrored across the head, and the eyes and nose done. Without those things done and in place, where you want them, it's going to be really hard to size the ear correctly after we've sculpted it. So if you want to go back and follow along with the course, you can click on this card right here and it'll take you back to the very first video. But if you're ready to sculpt the ear, all we have to do is apply our transformations. The reason we have to do that is that we scaled the cylinder down and rotated it when we were putting it in place. So we don't want to leave weird rotation or weird scaling on our model when we go in to sculpt it because it will mess with the sculpt brushes and how they perform. So to apply our rotation and our scaling, just hit Control A and then apply rotation, Control A and apply scale. And now, we're ready to sculpt. All right, so to get into sculpt mode, just hit control tab and check sculpt mode. From here, we wanna do two things. We wanna turn off mirroring across the X axis. And the reason for that is we are sculpting a single ear. We're not sculpting a symmetrical face. We're just sculpting one ear. And then we're using a mirror modifier to mirror it across the head. And we wanna turn on dynamic topology. Now you may get that pop up just click through it and it's okay. And then the last thing you need to know is that detailing for me is set to brush detail. I find that's the best way to sculpt with dynamic topology, but if you don't want that, you do have a couple other detail sizes that you can play around with. And one of the last things that might happen, which you may or may not want, is smooth shading may turn on. I'm gonna uncheck that because I don't like when smooth shading is turned on as I'm sculpting. That's more of a thing that I add after it's sculpted. So now that that's done, let's hit K on our keyboard to grab our snake hook brush and make our brush size a little bit bigger. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab and pull the cylinder into the shape of an ear. So make sure you have a reference image as you do this. Don't actually try to do this from memory because it, it won't turn out well. But basically an ear is like a weirdly shaped kidney bean. Uh, it's basically rectangular with a little bit of parts coming out the side and something like that is actually probably pretty good. And we'll hit G on our keyboard and then push this ear back towards the head. We don't want to go too far and we can check it from the back. But we do want it to come away from the head but still stay slightly connected. So there we go. All right, that's pretty good. And then we can go ahead and smooth down those edges to give us more of a rough shape for what we want. Now, if that shape isn't perfect, continue tweaking it until you get the shape that you're looking for. I'm gonna make some final adjustments with the grab brush here because I basically have the shape that I want and we're good to go. All right, so now let's scoop out some of the ear and add some detail. All right, so to start adding detail to our ear, let's zoom in a bit and grab the clay strips brush. From here, I'm just gonna clay strip around the outside to give ourselves the outline of the shape of our ear. And I'm gonna take this up along the bridge of the ear as well around the outside. Okay, so that's given us a pretty decent shape. I'm gonna add in just a little bit more for our earlobe section and call that good. Now hold control and that will allow you to carve away mesh and just carve out a decent chunk of mesh still using that clay strips brush. And then we'll go ahead and smooth that down and we can look at that from the side. Now that is actually pretty good just use the grab brush and push this in a little bit, smooth this down, and we can add in some of these extra details on the inside of our ear. Okay, so going back to the clay strips brush, let's go ahead and just add in this little section right here. So with our draw brush, I can just draw out where I kind of want that line to go and we'll have it stop there. So with our clay strips brush, we'll take that in to right about there. Now we're going to add in this extra little section, maybe come along right here and take this up. Now we will get in there with a crease brush and kind of smooth it out. But for the most part, that's how that works. Take that a little bit like there. Look at our reference, maybe something here, and then hit shift C and get your crease brush. From here, kind of crease around those uh, ridges that we'd made but aren't really defined. So we'll crease around a little bit here, take it all the way up on the top, and then crease that together. 
Now we wanna to touch this ridge up right here. So hold control on the crease brush and draw out a little bit for some extra width on that. We'll grab the grab brush, kind of pull these in and then smooth it down. Recrease that out. And if you notice on the top of the earlobe, which is connected to this part right here, and I'm going to make this a little thinner. And then with the crease brush, we'll actually draw up. Maybe it should be a little bit bigger. We will draw up that little ridge section. So it does something like that. Okay. And then we can come in with the clay strips brush, kind of follow that along and smooth it all down. All right, now, the important thing to note is that this piece that I put all the way down there doesn't actually go that far. So we need to retweak that just a bit and pull up this mesh section and reposition it to right about there, I suppose will work. And then we'll put in the ear hole. Now the ear hole is gonna go right above this little ridge that we created and basically right below and it'll go in at an angle. So let's go ahead and do something like that. Now it's okay that it's not perfect. It just needs to go out a little bit further and into the head is generally how I like to take it. So uh, something like that is probably okay. And then with the grab brush, come in again and kind of push and pull these to get the real shape. Now the earlobe is out sticking out a little bit. There we go. Can probably push that in just a bit and it's, that's okay. All right, and you can keep tweaking the inside details of the ear, but don't tweak too much because honestly, a lot of the times in games, ears aren't very well noticed. And a lot of times if you're doing animations, getting all this detail in an ear just isn't worth it for what you're trying to do. So having some of these details definitely makes sense, but don't go too crazy unless you're trying to go for a super realistic ear. All right, and with that said, I think I'm happy with how that ear is sculpted. We will push this in just a bit, smooth that out, and it's time to attach it to the head. All right, so to attach this to the head, go back to object mode and select the ear. And then what we wanna do is we wanna scale this down. So let's take a look at our other reference image that we've been using throughout this course and line this up. To line it up, let's grab our annotate line brush and then map up where it's supposed to map. So the top of this little section right here should be in line with our eyeball. And then it looks like the bottom of our earlobe should line up pretty accurately with the bottom of our nose. So we can just make a line like that, try to get that straight. Okay, and it looks like we just have to bring the ear down a little bit. So hit G and then Z to bring it down just a bit and kind of line that up a bit better, something like that. And then because we won't be able to get it perfect, let's go ahead and scale it down just a tad. And right about there, looks like we've hit the sweet spot. Okay, now, if you don't like the way the ears are sticking off the head, you can go ahead and kind of reposition it a little bit, but let's go ahead and hit Control A and apply the scaling on those ears. Now, here's the part that can be a little annoying, but uh, once you're happy with the ear, it's time to go ahead and bully in it. If you're not happy with the way your ear looks, don't do this step. Instead, pause the video, continue working on your ear, add in as much or as little detail as you really want, and then unpause the video and continue watching to see how to attach the ear to the head. So before we attach the ear to the head, let's go ahead and give ourselves a backup of our sculpted head just in case we decide that we don't like the ear after all, and we wanna go back and make some adjustments after we've done some more work on the character. So to do that, let's go ahead and select the head and then hit Shift D to duplicate it. And then right click, leave it in place and head on over to our outliner. From there, just double click on the name and rename it to something that you want. I'll call mine head with details. And then I'm gonna move this to my backups collection that I've created for each step of this tutorial series. And now we can focus on just applying our ear to our head. So now let's select the original head again and head on over to our properties panel where we have 
our modifiers tab, which is the little wrench icon over on the right. From there, we'll add the Boolean modifier. Now, once we added the modifier, we do have to change a couple of the settings. The first is we want to change the operation from difference to union. And then we'll select the object with the eyedropper. Just click on the eyedropper and it'll activate and then select the ear. And now you can actually see that the orange line that shows you the object and how it exists is now encompassing the ear. So when we hit apply, it adds this ear topology that we created to our actual head, but we still have an ear that exists there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that to the backups as well. And now we can focus on just the head. Now, because we had the mirror modifier on our ear and it was mirroring across the head, we have an ear on each side of our head already. So let's go into sculpt mode and clean this up a bit. All right, so once again, hit control tab to bring up our pie menu and then select sculpt mode. Here we can hold D and right click and remove our annotations. And then let's get in here with the uh, inflate brush. Now you should notice that after you've applied this, dynamic topology has turned itself off. So simply click that box and turn dynamic topology back on. So from here, let's go ahead and sculpt around the outside of our ear and just make it look like this is actually joined together with real skin. So as we inflate around the outside, and then smooth in place, it looks like the skin is actually joined together, which is really what we want. Now you may have to come in on the backside and deflate a little bit. So hold control on your inflate brush and then smooth that out to actually join up that mesh. And then you can inflate and move it together and smooth it out as necessary. So this can take a little bit depending on the way that you added uh, your ear to the model and the angle that it was attached at. So it might not give you the best results off the bat, but once you've selectively inflated and reconnected everything, just go in with the crease brush a little bit and crease in a real ear connection here. And it actually looks like I'm going to need to thin out this ear overall. So we can look at that from the side. And maybe the back here, let's let's do this and we'll deflate it. So hold control uh, with the inflate brush and deflate this area and then smooth it down. And that'll give us a bit of a thinner ear. Something like that is probably fine. Now for the last piece, and it's that little weird cap that goes over the ear hole to protect you from sound coming from the front, or at least I assume that's what it's for. Um, so let's grab the clay strips brush here and just real quick go back and forth over this area and build this up. Smooth it down. And then let's go back to our other reference image and just make sure that the transition is nice and smooth between the parts of the ear. So I'm going along the uh, rim of the ear with the clay strips brush to make it connect in an even way. We'll take this out a little bit further and build up that section just a bit. And then uh, I'm actually going to smooth out the earlobe a bit and get in here with the crease brush and try to make a crease so it looks like the earlobe's a bit detached. You don't have to detach your earlobes. I just like my earlobes detached. All right, and there we go. Now we could get in here and add a little bit more detail if we really wanted to. Um, make that a little bit more prominent overall. Punch that down a bit, and then we'll just add in the ear hole back because once we had applied the Boolean modifier, it did a union, which meant that the ear hole, since it was inside the head, didn't actually get added to our topology. So we're gonna go in here real quick and just recreate our ear hole. And then with the grab brush, try to angle that so it's going inside the head. And then the last little step is just to bring that covering over your ear. Pull it out just a bit. Maybe push that back. And then we can get in here with the crease brush and kind of clean up some of this detailing. Now that we have our ear hole and it's actually attached to the head, it can go a little bit smoother.
All right, and I'm kind of okay with this. I don't need a whole lot of detail for this character. So this ear having the general shape of an ear and some of the generalized detail uh, is good enough for me. So at this point, I'm just gonna build this up a bit, smooth it down just a little. Come in with the crease brush again. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with that overall. Okay, so though I'm pretty happy with it, the reference image does have the ears coming out just a bit further than I have mine coming out. So we're gonna pull these out just a bit around the edge to give it a more flared look. And then we'll drag that rim around the end of our ear to make it look a bit more prominent. Something like that, I suppose. And I'm good. I'm good with that, it's okay. It matches the reference close enough and you're really not gonna be paying attention to the ears of the model once the hair is on there and you'll just notice, hey, it has ears. But to check out what it's gonna look like with smooth shading turned on, go ahead and click dynamic topology, check smooth shading, and you'll see what your final model with its ears will look like. Now, here's the thing, uh, I just did that without mirror turned on. And if you find yourself in a situation like that, you'll see one ear is out further than the other. It's not really what I want. So with dynamic topology turned on, I'm gonna go ahead and remesh them, which is this symmetrize button here under dynamic topology. And since I work on the right-hand side, I wanna symmetrize from positive X to negative X. But if you like to sculpt on the left-hand side of your model, symmetrize from negative X, to positive X. And now that it's done that, we can see that the ears now match and the topology generated on the right is now the same as the topology on the left. All right, so at this point, we have finished all of the facial details for our character and we've sculpted a pretty decent ear overall. Is it the best ear? No, but just like with the rest of these facial details, once you're pretty happy with it, move on because the next year that you sculpt will be a little bit better because you have already gained some experience sculpting that one piece. So I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and if you liked this video, let me know in the comments below and smash that like button. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this, please subscribe as it helps our channel grow and encourages us to make better content. And on that topic, if you have any content that you would like to see, let me know in the comments as well. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.